Okay, so today's class is Surfing Basics and Navigating the Downers Grove Public Library website. And when I say surfing basics, I mean the very basic. I, I, you know, I'm not trying to teach you how to just surf the web, but I want to just kind of show you um, how to get to our site and you know how to filter things when you're doing searches on on the internet so i'm gonna share my screen with you okay and we're gonna do this one share all right perfect okay can you see that yeah but you're small if i want to make it bigger do i hit that thing up in the corner by the x mark to make it larger to make it full screen yeah you should be able to hit it and give it a shot. Well, you know what? It probably moved me like my our panel made it smaller and because of the uh, screen share. But this is here is how you minimize and my screen that has you and Annie over to the right and they're small in the center. It says Google Google search and all of that's in right. That's, that's because I, that's what I that's the way I wanted to be because I want you to see the the, the screen. Okay. So this, yep. So leave it's it okay little, that we're small. I'll leave it where it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for um this class, we're going to use the Google search search engine or browser. There are others. Sometimes people use Yahoo or Bing or maybe um I can't think of any other. Those are the two most popular. But um I've become a fan of Google. So we're going to use Google for doing a Google search. Good, and yeah, I would too. There's a, up here is what they call the URL bar or where you would write a, your internet address. If you already know it, it's usually www.something.something. .something. And you see, once you start typing, it'll start pulling up things that probably people have searched before. Or if you were just doing like, I don't know what the site is, but it has to do with the IRS. I always use this when I start typing in IRS and you see it brings up possible things that you could be looking for. Oh, here we go. Stimulus. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it's the same thing happens if you use the search bar here. If you type, um, oh, Melinda, come on in, Melinda. If you start typing here in the search bar, the same thing will happen. If I type IRS and it'll start bringing up possible things that you could be looking for. But today we're looking for Downers Grove. And watch when I start typing in down, it just starts bringing up all the possible things you could be looking for. Right. Oh, golf course, <laughs> Downers Grove. And then once I get to start public, is to bring up public library. So when you're doing a search for anything, not just for the library, but when you just, start, this is a good way to, if you start typing, Google will start to try to fill in, did you mean this? Were you looking for that? And maybe you were, and then you can just pick something from the list, or if not, you just, continue typing and hit search. But we're gonna click on the public library. Now, and I might move myself from here to here. All right, so once you hit enter from a search, the list of things will populate below and you'll see the ones near the top are usually most closely related to what you're looking for. And here we go, Downers Grove Public Library Home. And recently, Google did an update and now over to the right here is also a quick link sort of to what you were looking for. And you can click website here and it'll take you to the Downs Grove public website. Or if you were looking for their Facebook home or something like that, you could click one of these links. And you notice as you put your cursor on it, it turns into a hand, which lets you know that you can go there. Um, but before we go, I wanted to show a lot of people don't even pay attention to these um, other little helpers down here. Whatever you search for, you can, I guess you can say, um, be more specific. Maybe you were looking for a map of the Downers Grove Public Library. If you click on it and look, it brings up maps and it'll show you where the library is and what's in that area. So here we are, and then here are the things that are around us. So that's a good thing to know there, if you click maps, news, that would be if there was something in the newspaper or oh, look, I have this app, Downs Grove Patch, about the library. This will pop up here. Images, you just wanted to see pictures of the library. And these are some from the inside. Yeah. 
shopping. I don't know what you would be shopping for with the library, but <laughs> oh, if you wanted to buy a book about the Downers Grove, I guess it's about Downers Grove. Here we go. Oh, that's right around the corner. Huh. And then more, there would be videos, more news, books, flight, finance. But depending on what you're searching for, you could um, specialize your search using some of these filters up here. But we don't need that. We just want to go to the plain old Downers Grove Library, go back to all. And we're going to go to the website. So click that there. And voila, back to us. I don't know which way is better, Annie. You think at the top? No. You don't really need to see me, do you? There we go. This is what we call the landing page. And I'm just, and I'm gonna go through these things, not quickly, but just gonna kind of move through them. We're just gonna kind of highlight them, but we will be providing you with the, um, the training materials afterwards. We'll, we'll email it to you. That way, if you missed something or you weren't sure about something, you can go back and look through and um, it'll kind of help you navigate a little bit better. But this is our landing page and we're gonna, I'm gonna go through the different parts of it here. So at the top of our landing page is our hours for today, a link to get to your account and also a link to how to get a library card if you don't have one. You can start your search here if you like in the search field. Here is the uh, main navigation bar, and this will take you to the different areas of our web page, our website, and the different pages. This is like what I like to call our headline. Headline, it's usually just uh, the, most, some, the most current news or a link to the most current information. And a lot of people with COVID going and, and things changing from phase four to 5A, 5B, they want to know what, how am I supposed to be using the library now? And so this is where you will find some current events. Here, library updates in the middle of the home page. And this is telling you that we're going to be closed. Oh, due to a roofing project. Yeah, if you've been to the library, you probably know it's on the Curtis Street. There have been some guys with cones and taped off areas. And uh, that's because they were, they, were doing, they were cleaning the windows and they were doing some roof work. So this is a good place to go. If you're like, what's going on? You come here, library updates. And if you click the learn more, it'll take you to even more updates. Which is, this is this one I like is very important. Available services upon reopening and unavailable services. And this is as of Monday, April 26th. So some people want to know, has, has the cafe opened? Are you still, you know, the media lab? So these are some of the things that still have not become available yet. Um, we Things change kind of fast. So if you're still not sure, if you think something wrong, just give us a call and we can let you know. But um, they should be updating this regularly. And then here's more updates and information. Let's go back. All right, so we were here at updates right here on our, sorry, main page, our quick links, access our e-library, book a computer, curbside pickup, because we're still doing that service, Swan Libraries app, because uh, we're part of the Swan Library system, which is, I think, maybe 100 or more libraries that we, um, once you have a card with one of us, then your card is good at all of these libraries and you can check out materials and we kind of deliver and pick up and you know exchange materials through these different libraries so you can actually download the, the app to your phone and be able to use your library card to to access those too and wireless printing and uh that's if you you can actually print from your print from your home or your mobile device to here and have us print it out and you can pick it up from the library. So if, like if you didn't have a printer at home, you wanted to print something, and this will be the instructions. Um, upcoming events. Hey, there we are, right there. Okay, and then if you can, you can use the scroll, scroll bar to scroll down and see what's coming up in the different areas of the library. And I think it, I'm not sure how many weeks it goes by. Let's see, this goes all a full month's worth here. But if you see right in here in the corner, there's a see all events. You can click on that and it'll take you to the page where you can view the calendar in this way. And on this page, you can search for a specific event or 
you can filter it by the age group. Like if you're looking for a teen or kids program or event type. And, I'm, and I know I'm going fast, but some of the things that we're looking at on that home page, um, there's, uh, well, how they say there's more than one way to skin a cat? Well, there's more than one way to get to these things. So this isn't the only way to see the events or to see what's happening at the library or get a card or anything like that. There's several, there'll be links in several places to do the same thing. So if you missed it in one spot, you know, you'll catch it in the other one. So this one is just sort of like a, a snapshot of what's upcoming so you can look at it if you didn't feel like if you just want to know just today what's happening today well my class and then there's a zoom intermediate class today and then a closed pin activity for kids for tomorrow or is that what that's tomorrow what's today thursday friday thursday, yeah. thursday, today. thursday. so then tomorrow is the kickoff <laughs> <laughs> so again scrolling down we're still on just that landing page the home page of the library you can go to just for kids to see not just activities but this is like their the kids page on our website and you can find out just general information about what the kids room offers how to get assistance with homework help upcoming events things like this and there's one of those for just for kids, just for teens, just for seniors, and then just for businesses. So these are all quick links to just get into just, you know, a, the page for that particular demographic. All right, a little further down, discover our staff pick. You can click here and see what books our staff are suggesting would be maybe good good reads and if you click here view more it'll take you to the staff picks page and you can get a better idea of what books and if they're here or checked out so staff picks and book an expert now Annie are are they able to do that is this a, a service that's being offered currently you can do a book of expert virtually. So virtually. we've been doing it virtually. Yeah. And sometimes if you come in and, you know, <laughs> right. there's certain people, yeah, that will help you with the computers. So, so up at the computer help desk or the, in the IT department, um, there's a book and expert service that's offered. So say you just got a new uh, phone and you're like totally lost about how to do it, or you need to create an Excel spreadsheet just this one time for something and you need some help. Well, you can call, you can call or you can go here and online and you can book an expert. You would fill out the form, tell them what you want, and then, and you know, be in specific like what you need help with and submit it. And someone will get in touch with you about someone on our staff, <clears throat> most likely from the computer help desk that will be able to help you. There are uh, people on the, at the department they have a uh, you know a varying amount of um, skills mine was never the iphone or anything like that but we did have someone up here that was really good with iphone or you know apple products so people would say oh i need help with this or just i don't know how to set up my email or you know how do i retreat just you know a wide variety of things that you can book an expert on which i really like uh, down here, uh, the Discoveries newsletter, that's our um, library newsletter. If you click here, you'll be able to read the current issue online, virtually, right there. Uh, here, Cover to Cover podcast is another um, sort of a service that I believe is not just the IT department, those from different um, it's not really the IT department. I think Lauren from the IT and uh, Cindy from PR are the hosts. And they, they're varying topics here uh, for the podcast. Um, I think it used to be just what was going on in the library and things that were happening, but uh, I think it's kind of been opened up to more things. Now I see something about uh, albums and book discussions. And so these are ones that the, they've already um, recorded and you can listen slash watch the podcast right here and let's see. 
podcast. Oh, and here's another link to get a library card. We're going to go through that a little bit more. Down the scroll down here are our links to our social media. We have Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. I didn't know that, Pinterest. I'm not even going to say don't do it, but my gosh, it's a rabbit hole. Once I go on the Pinterest for anything, three hours later, I'm like, what, what was I looking for? <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, you know, I just say, enter at your own risk. <laughs> but I do, I, I am uh, friends with them, with the Downers Grove Library on Instagram. And the, and that's kind of nice because you can kind of go in there and see the Instagram page and kind of get a few more snapshots of what's happening at the library. And then here's our address, our phone number, and our fax. Now, I don't, Annie, I don't believe we take incoming faxes, but you can fax out, correct? Uh, that would be an incoming fax. Actually, we, you can't yeah. fax out. You can't fax out. If you need to fax, you need to come up here and it's a dollar page. Mm -hmm. so, so we do, we do, we do get incoming faxes, yes. Oh, so this is an incoming fax. I yes. see, learning something new every day. <laughs> All right, more quick links. And these are the same ones that were here, the just four, but you know, you can get to them here. And there's another one that's jobs and volunteering. Here we go, attend events, same as here, but just another link to it. And you can just go to the events, book a computer, e-library. And this is how you can tell us um, how we did on something either we, we welcome any and all feedback we'll put it that way we uh, we want to know if one of the services we're providing are, are helpful and if we're doing it in a way that's um you know good for our community and again another wireless printing the newsletter sign up link is here you can sign up to get uh our newsletter delivered to you and then you can tell what you're you know what you're interested in and things like that. So if you wanted to get, wanted to be on our mailing list for the newsletter, you do that. The contact us, now I like this link here because if you click on it, you can see again our hours, our um, upcoming closings, and also the emails to the most common um, desk or departments in the library. So the Ask Us desk is the one that's upstairs so the adult and teen services slash ask us. The checkout desk is for circulation if you had a certain question. Computer help desk is obviously for here if you had an IT question or computer question. And then the kids room if you want to know about kids programs. So this was, is a good way to, um, you can email a question to us, uh, to the different departments. And at the very bottom, chat with us. This is this option will be at the bottom of most screens. What you go on, you can click on it and it will say available and you can type a chat. You know, um, I, you know, lost my library card. You know, what do I need to do to get a new one? And we're monitoring them and whoever picks it up will say, oh, you know, this is a cert question. They'll say, they'll send us and say, hey, there's a question for you. And then we, we will answer you through the chat and you know hopefully can resolve your issue so if you want to get like just had a quick question you didn't feel like calling you don't need you don't really need to send an email it's just something really quick just send us a chat and that's an option for us so that is the landing page of our website and i know that's quite a bit but like i said we do have the um the, the, i have the training materials print that we're going to send to you guys so that you'll be able to go back through it if you missed something like oh my gosh where was that where was that link so now that we've seen we, we're on the site and we want to use the site we want to place some things on hold or you know check out some things or see what's there first i want to say do you have a library card so because if you do it's good to go ahead and log into your account from the web page, oh, just a second. I'm gonna get to water. Uh, 
month um, to place items on hold, you'll have to be in your account or um, for some of our databases to log in or use the databases, some of them you have to be uh, logged into your account. So if you don't have a library card, you click on this link and it will give you the information of what you need to get a library card. And really um, what we require is some type of a photo ID and or something that has your current address on it so that we can check through our, our, um, our resources and make sure that you are in incorporated Downers Grove. And then you just get your, you come in, you fill out the paperwork and you get your library card right there if you come in. Um, you can also get what we call a business or a nonprofit organization card. Some of the businesses in the area have a business card like Pete's or like some of the, some of the schools, uh, the, the teachers will do that so that they can check out things for their different classrooms. So um, this will give you the information here about how to get a business or a nonprofit organization a card. And once you have a card, you can log into your account. Um, it'll require your library card number. And when you set up your card, the system defaults your PIN to being the last four numbers of your phone number on your account. But you, if you come in and do your card in person, you have the option to, to pick a different PIN. But that's how you, you would log into your account with your library card number and your PIN. And on the same page, it, it explains to you about borrowing and fines, um, how long you keep certain items out. Most items check out for three weeks unless that they're new or hot reads, and then they check out for two weeks. We are currently fine-free at Downers Grove, but the stipulation is our house, our rules, their house, their rules. So if you check out materials from the Downers Grove Public Library, then you check them out here, then they're fine free for here. But if you are using your Downers Grove patron and you say you put something on hold and you pick it up from another library, even if it's our item, if you check it out from their library and they're not fine free, you'll, you'll get fined for it. So people get confused sometimes when they say, oh, well, I'm a Downers Grove patron, I see fines on my account. But if you picked up that item from another library, if you checked it out from somewhere else, they will apply fines to it. And though we are fine free, if you lose or damage an item, that is a fee, not a fine. And those fees will be charged to your account for lost or damaged items. So just keep that in mind. And let's move on. So that's if you don't have a library card. If you do have a library card, you click here on my account. You log in with your card number. And the PIN, which is usually the last four of your phone number on your account. And then you would click log in. If you have your, your, you forgot your card number, you know you have one, you forgot it, you can click this link here. You click here, it'll open up to where you can type in your last name, your birthday, you submit, and it will send you the link to how to get your, it'll send you your card number to the ad, the email address that you have on file. So that's why it's really important when you're getting your library card or once you've had it, if anything changes like your email address, your primary email or your phone number, keep that, that information on your card up to date. And you can call us at the library and you can say, oh, my, my something, something changed, let me give you my new information. Or I'm gonna show you, you can do that also yourself. Um, if you forgot, so that's if you forgot your card, you can click forgot my card. Or if you have the card number and you forgot your pin, you click here, you put your card number in and click submit and it'll send you a, a link to reset your password or to reset your pin. Just like with, you know, other accounts, when you go and you go, oh, I forgot my password. You, you click on it and it'll send you a link to reset your password. So we, we do that here too. All right, so set my account, I'm gonna put my number back in. Right, so let's see. 
there I am. You know that you're in when it says welcome and it has your name there. So it should open up to your account. I'm going to try to move this down because I want to show you guys. So working in circulation, I, I just started in circulation in August and I, we get a number of calls about what do I have to take out on my card? When is this due? Do I have any fines? If you have a library card and you have your pen, you can do a lot of your account inquiries and maintenance yourself. So here we are with my account. And if you scroll down a little further, we'll start with personal information. You see, here's my name and my card number and my library, and it has the option for me to edit that. Same thing here, where I live, my email address, and then I can edit that information in there. So if you're any of this changed, you click the edit button and you can change it. Here we go. Change your pin. You put in your current pin, the new pin, and then confirm a new pin. And this is all under the personal information. Under preferences, this one where, where you prefer to pick up your, your holes when you place holes. And right here, I check, record my checkout history and show my checkout history. A lot of people say, Oh, I know I checked out this book before. I think I read that. I started doing this because I, and Annie and I talked about this the other day. I would find myself checking out the same books over and over again. That looks good. Well, I should read that. And I start reading it. I already read that book. So I started to I check this so that I can go in and see my checkout history and know, oh, I did read this a long time ago. <laughs> so, um, and then here, set up text messaging number and, and it shows here that I have and you can request this when you're um, getting a library card it'll ask you how you want to be notified it'll say um, phone email or text and that just means if for instance if you sign up for a class and you want to get confirmations of things or you um, have something on hold and the library wants to let you know that hold is ready to pick up you have you can choose how you want to be notified most people choose email a lot of people choose text message now so that it just pops up on their phone like they're out. Oh, my book is ready to pick up. And that's what that means. And I actually have it set for text message because I'm near a phone more than I am the computer when I'm away from work. So under personal information, lots of things you can do here for yourself, changing your pen, setting up preferences and, and requesting to be text for notification. And then the next tab under your account or checkouts. Let's see how much do I have checkout? Oh, not that much. Okay. Oh, look. So I checked out all of these kids' cookbooks because my daughter is out of school and I told her she's gonna have to do some cooking this summer. I'm not cooking every meal while she sits at home. So I checked out a bunch of cookbooks for her. And you can see here it says times renewed. So I haven't renewed these any at all. When you check out things at Downs Grove Library, and I think it's for all of Swan, if there's not a hold on it, that is if someone else isn't expecting it or waiting for it, it will automatically renew your checkout up to five times before it tells you, okay, now you need to bring it back to the library. So that's another thing. People will call and say, can you renew this item for me? Can you renew that? Well, I said, well, check out. It'll renew five times. Let's just go in and see. But some things may have this right here where it says renewal limit reach, no further renewals allowed. So again, someone will say, I tried to renew um, online, but it wouldn't let me. Well, it's probably because you re reached the renewal limit and I've reached it on both of these items and this one too. And these. <laughs> Actually, I just checked those out. They just don't allow renewals on that. And so that'll be the thing too. Like these are some Emporium items and we'll get to that, but these aren't books. But these are items that don't, at the current time, don't have renewals. So you just check them out for, a, 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 I think it's two weeks and then, or three weeks maybe, and then they don't renew. But so you could either, here it says all of your items you checked out. If you select all, and then you can try to renew all and it'll tell you, it'll pop up and say, can't renew that one or all items renewed. Or if you just want to renew one item at a time, you can click here and you can go ahead and click here. And then at the bottom, you can say, renew and it'll renew if possible if it doesn't have that you know renewal limit reached then it'll renew the items that you selected and there's your due date so when people will call and 
calls the library and you wait to get transferred to the department just to say, when are my items due? When you can just go into your account real quick, take a look at what you have checked out and see when they're due back. So that is checkout. And now we're at hold. And you see this little green thing? That's a good sign. That's telling me something I put on hold is ready for pickup. And there it is. Ooh, the new movie with Denzel Washington. So, and it tells me here, it is ready for pickup. And it tells me that I need to pick it up by June 2nd and I can pick it up at the Downers Grove Library. So this is similar to the checkout screen. You see all these options up here. You can cancel holes. You can edit the pickup location. Say you thought I wanted to pick it up for Downers Grove, but I'm actually gonna be in, um, you know, Lombard or somewhere else this weekend, maybe I'll just pick it up from there. So you can select to have it picked up, to pick up your item from a different library. You can select all and apply any of these, you know, actions to it, or you can say, well, I just want to cancel this one and I don't think I want this one anymore. And then you click cancel and it'll cancel the holes for you. So you can see, and people will call too and say, I put some stuff on hold and, you know, is it ready for me to pick up yet? Well, if you didn't get a notification or you're not sure you might've missed it, go into your account and it'll tell you right here in the status, this one, pick up by, which means it's ready, got the green thing, but then these are all pending. So I know, well, someone either had it checked out and they haven't brought it back yet. And that's pretty much what they were. So you'll be able to see the status of your holds, where you're gonna pick your holds up and when that hold expires. And also you'll be able to make some, uh, apply these actions to your hold if you want to. Now edit and suspend the hold. Suspending a hold means I don't want to cancel it, but I don't want it, my hold to come in while I'm on vacation in Hawaii. So I'm going to suspend it until I get back. And then when I get back, I'll cancel that suspension. So that way you don't get taken out of the, the line for that item, but you get pushed back so that it doesn't come in while you're on. Because what happens is, if I don't pick this item up by June 2nd, on June 3rd, they're gonna pull it and send it back to where it came from or let the next person get it. So yeah, so that means, so that way, if you don't think you're gonna be able to pick it up on time, you can suspend the hold or you can cancel it and say, I'll just put the hold back on another time. And look at, oh, and I forgot to say, oh, so over here is a snapshot of your account. Your, status. Mine is okay. It tells me how many things I have checked out digital from the e-library or library, how many items I have hold, ready for download one, ready for pickup one. So that means I have two things actually. And look at me, all right, good girl, no fine. Yay. <laughs> but if I did, here we are, fines, it would tell you uh, current fines and if you're blocked, because at a certain point, and, I'm, and I should know this because I'm circulation, but there's a certain amount, and I want to say it's anything above $20. Once you get to that point, it'll block you from checking out. And But if you have something lost or damaged, that will be an automatic block from you checking out until you get that, that situation um, straightened out. So even if we don't have fines, just be careful about... Um, long overdue things too, because if you have something checked out and even though it's not a current fine, if you go past 21 days, it'll assume that that item is lost or it's long overdue and it'll block you from checking out too. So don't just, you know, hold on to an item just because, you know, we don't have fines on it because you will still kind of get, um, there's still some responsibility tied into bringing the items back on time. Okay. So from my account, I'm able to view and edit my personal information. I am able to see what items I have checked out and when they're due back. And if I want to renew them if possible or see if there's no renewals available. Um, and then holds, I can see what I have on holds and I can make changes, edit my holds or suspend those holds. So that is, I feel like, some very, very important information for us to be able to be sort of independent and autonomous in maintaining and managing our own account. 
Um, a lot of times, you know, we will get busy in circulation and maybe we can't get to your phone call and you get, you know, you so that you can avoid that frustration. You can come in and look at the information, especially around what's checked out and when they're due back and what you have on hold, if it's ready to pick up. You can do that for yourself by logging into your account on our website and just looking at that information. All righty. I'm going to take a sip of water, excuse me. Okay, so it looks like we've got about 15 minutes left. And in that 15 minutes, I want to show you, just give you an idea about um, checking out really quick. And then we're gonna go through the different tabs that are on um, our web, our main, main page, our landing page. So say you wanna look for a book. One of my favorite kids books is Bear Snores On. All right, I typed into the search bar here, that title, and before, oh, come, come on. So I wanna show you this here in this area, all libraries. And a lot of people get kind of confused because they'll say, oh, I saw it online and it says it was in, I saw all these things, but this is all libraries. That's all those 100 libraries that are in the SWAN system. You can click here and you can say, I just want to know what that downers grow. You have that option. Then you'll only see the items that match your search that we have at this library. Otherwise, it's going to default for all libraries. And this one, all fields. If you notice the title and that's the specific title that you want, then you can you can also limit your search by these. It's a series. It's that, you know, um, Hunger Games series or whatever. But Otherwise, it's looking at everything that that has this in it or is related to that. Once you click the search, it'll bring up you see 76 results and it'll list here all the different things that match that title. And this is very different formats of the same book. But over to your left, you also can limit your search in this way. If you know you just want the book, you can click this and then you'll It'll say, click that and click apply, and it'll just show you the books. And you'll know that you have it on that because it'll have it up here as one of the limits to your search. But there are other factors you can search by if you just want a nonfiction book or if you want to say a specific library other than this one, the audience that you're looking for, if it's just kids or it's adult. So you can limit your search. You can be as broad or as narrow as you want with your search. And from here, if you see, and I am still in my account doing this search. And this is why I said it's good to go ahead and sign in first, because look, I see that these books are on the shelf at Downers Grove. But this one, there was a DVD. Oh, let me undo this. So this is how you take off that filter. And now I wanted to get the DVD but it says no copies at Downers Grove. I know that there's somewhere, so I'm just gonna place a hold on it. Do I wanna pick it up at Downers Grove? You know what? No, I'm gonna be in Westmont this weekend and maybe it'll come in there. So I'm gonna make it, you know, Westmont. And then you can place the hold and then you can say success and you will be notified when your item is ready for pickup. There we go. You say, okay. So now I have a hold on that item. And if I was to go to my account and go to hold, my bear snores on, it should be there. Oh, it didn't refresh. Hold on. All right. Well, it should be there. <laughs> Maybe it takes a while for it to refresh, but it'll, it'll be there. I placed the hold on it. I think I might have to log out and log back in. But that's one of the ways you can um, place a hold on an item. And sometimes people will call in and want to place a hold. And it looks different on the staff side than it does because we don't go through the website to do it. We use a different program, which is more mechanical. And so from here, I feel like it's better because you can actually see the kind of material it is and like oh yeah that's what it, i wanted that's exactly what i wanted but um from our side you may say anything oh when you get it that's not exactly what i meant so i think it's good for you to practice putting things on hold from your own 
inside your account from our website. So you can see what the material looks like with the picture and everything, and you'll know you're getting what you really want. So you can place holes and you can view your all of your account, all that thing from my account. Now, does anybody have any questions? I know I'm going kind of kind of fast. No. Okay, I'll keep going then. So let's go back to our landing page. There are so many services and resources that are available at the library that a lot of people don't know about because it's not, I mean, it's not something that you would actually think of. <laughs> you think checking out books, placing books on hold, and maybe attending like summer reading program. Well, let's start here on the left, using the library. Updates, we saw that. Curbside pickup, how to get a library card, hours and contact, but book club. We have book club bags that look like this already set up. Say you want to, you want to, have a book club, but you know you don't know how to do it. We've kind of taken the work out of that for you. You click here and you'll see these are all of the book club bags that we have, and it'll tell you that each one contains uh, ten copies of the title, discussion questions, and author information. So you can say, you know what, I'm going to see if you know Mary and eight of my other friends want to do a book club about this book I heard about, and I see there's a bag for it. And I'm gonna see if where the crawl that is. Oh, this one. I'm reading this right now. But I would have loved to have read that with a, you know, with some friends or family members. We could have gotten a book club bag and have our own spontaneous book club for that book. And that's available through our library. Isn't that nice? So if you go to here and do book club, you can see what book clubs we have, book club bags we already have put together that you can come in and just check out. Book a room and book an expert. I think we are starting to book rooms now. Um, if you have questions about that, though, that is a thing that you would call the ask us desk because they're the ones that handle the the reservations. But there's room policies, the types of rooms that we have, meeting rooms, media lab. That's not available yet, but that's a really wonderful resource once we get back to normal. Um, where you could go in and you know use different types of media um, products and, and guitars and things like that, just you know cameras and make videos and green screens and yes. things like that. Mm -hmm. No, I love it. I couldn't believe that was here. I was like, that is totally awesome. So awesome. All right, uh, check it out. E-library, new materials, recommendation. We did the staff pick or get a recommendation. Sometimes people will say, I like this sort of thing, but I don't know, you know, what other books could I read? You can get recommendations for what kind of books, you know, what would be a good type of book? So you fill out this form and submit it and we'll get back to you with some recommendations. Hey, you like Junie B. Jones, you may like Geronimo Stilton too. I like this as well, material purchase request. Sometimes people say, I can't believe you don't have that book in the system at all. That is unbelievable. Click here and you can make a request. Who knows? It might be something we just missed and you say, okay, that, you should have this book. We might order it and add it to our, um, our inventory. You have that ability to do that right here online. And the e-library. This is how um, we have Libby, Cloud, Library, Hoopla, and some other um, e-library apps. This is where you can download. So when we were looking at the searches, you saw one of the things you could filter by was you know, um, e-library or digital information. So you, if you download one of these apps, and under here, each one gives you general information and instruction sheet, and you can also get a tutorial on how to use it. So if you have one of these apps already, but you haven't been utilizing it, or you're not really sure how to use it, come here, click on it, and get it, or get a tutorial, and you can see how to download items um, to listen to. I listen to things in my car all the time from my days of commuting from the city to here, and I would just download lots and lots of stuff. It kept me sane on the highway. So I think that is a really great resource. Beyond Books, we talked about, oh, we, talk, we didn't talk about 3D printing. There is a machine here. Say you lost 
a game piece to your Monopoly game, there is a way that you can request a 3D print of that, which is basically just creating someone um, broke a class to their blind and the, the place didn't make it anymore. So they brought in the one that they had and said, can we make this? And there's a machine that we use that uses certain types of materials, plastics that can create those kind of things, 3D printing. And that will be the computer. Oh, see, look, the little dinosaur someone requested. I know. All right. So no, the anything emporium. That is a wonderful, wonderful collection of various types of uh, things that people would use that would be just, just sort of fun. Maybe you wanted to try something out like um, night vision camera or wireless hotspot. So there is a, a kids one. So there's kid things downstairs. These are the different types of things that you can check out. Mostly like games, uh, microscope, a family ghost hunting kit. So these are all things in the Anything Emporium. You can request them, check them out. Oh, there's a VHS to DVD converter for those of us old school who still have some <laughs> videotapes and you want to change them to a DVD, you can check this out. It is a, and you know, you can do it. It's amazing. I think it's just a wonderful. So that's our Anything Emporium. We also have an art collection. You'll see art throughout the building, but we usually have like a display in the gallery downstairs. Um, the cover to cover podcast where we talked about earlier that you can go to and see um, previous recordings and then the media lab that unfortunately I don't think it's, I, I asked, I don't think it's currently being used because we, for spacing and social distancing, we have some staff members that were using it as offices to keep the yes. distance right. But I, I'm, you know, eventually I'm hopeful that once things start to get back to sort of normal, we'll be able to use that media lab again. The Just Four is similar to the links on our landing page. If you just wanted to see information about kids or what's going on with teens for the summer, you click on the Just Four, again, homework help. So it's like a, this is their landing page for the things that they're offering, new books for teens and events for teens. Textbook. Huh. I didn't know that. Look at this. DG carries a selection of District 99 textbooks that can be used in the library. And that's something. Well, I'm so proud of this. All right, um, let's see, attend events. So this is the same as um, the calendar that we saw before. Like I said, more than one way to skin a cat. So you come here, attend events. And how does it work? Learn to use the Zoom. Then you can get a direct link to our event page. And then this is make it. These are the things that they're gonna be made or like um, craft projects that we're doing. And my daughter and I did one with the face. So that was fun. Oh, uh, things you can watch, adults and teens, registration required. So this one is the teens or the virtual program, let's see. 10 events, summer reading club, which has just started. So if you wanted to register and it's for kids, teens and adults, reading colors your world. And you'll see signs up through the library and things like that. And see, here we go. And adults, teens and kids can sign up and be a part of our summer reading program. So that is under attend events. And then research. All databases or specific databases for a specific demographic. But if you click on all databases, and this is another one where um, I felt like you should have, you should be in your account because some of these databases require you to log in with your library card number. But if you know, for instance, that the database you're looking for is, um, what's the ancestry? Let's do A. You know, it starts with an A, you can do that and apply the filter and then they'll bring up all of our um, databases that start with the letter A. Or if you're not sure what it starts with, but you know the topic, you can look over here, for instance, under articles, you can find databases about journals and magazines and newspapers, 
and so on going through one I like is the education one because we have several online learning um, databases. The universal class, one of my favorite. And I'm not going to go too much into the databases because next month on June 24th, I believe, I'll be presenting the uh, introduction to the Downs Grove Public Library databases. We will go through this very topic how to get to our databases and how to use some of the databases that are available. So that will be next week, next month, I'm sorry, in June. All right, learn about us. If you're interested in our board members, our equity, diversion, inclusion, our EDI policies and procedures, a staff directory, a little bit of library and local history and transparency. I like this one because it kind of gives a list of our policies about code and conduct, library services, and then plans and things that we're currently working on or have worked on. So this is about basically the so sort of like the, the inside, the guts of the library, not the things you would check out, but the people, the people that work here in our policies and procedures. Get involved. If you'd like to donate to the library or jobs and volunteering, you go here. Oh, unfortunately, there are no current job openings, but there are ways for you to volunteer if you wanted to. If, I guess there are no volunteer positions either. Sorry, sometimes there are, but I guess we have enough staff now, but that's where you would go if you wanted to. Oh, we do have a local author section. And so if you're a local author and you'd like to submit your work, you'd be able to do it here. There's a submission form and you could submit your work if you, you know, we do have uh, books by people that live in our area. So we do accept local author submissions. Uh, let's go on to community service. And I really like this tab because there's so much on here that I did not know was available. Um, you can look for one. I really like the social services because uh, a lot of people were impacted negatively during COVID, losing their jobs or their income being reduced. And so this link is to where you can get help in our community if you're you know experiencing some types of hardship so just if you do or you know someone who does or or needs to help check this out there's a list of other community partners here and i've actually uh had experience myself with the police people's resource center when i was unemployed a few years back and they were, it was very helpful so just um i i think this is a great great resource if you need help with voters corner sometimes people we offer our um, the irs forms and instruction booklets but maybe you have more questions or you might need some help you know well, i'm just going to do a plug here now uh, we okay. are going to have prc classes online with prc um, it'll be in the next discoveries and all you have to do is contact prc and they'll be virtual but they're um, I think there's six weeks and one is seven weeks. So it'll be in the discovery. So it's already online. So if you're interested, you don't have to be a Downers Grove patron to take these classes. So you do have to arrangements to be able to convert tape to DVDs. You have that equipment or you? We do, but I don't know. Do you have a Downers Grove library card still? Yes. You do. Yeah, we do. We do have that. We have that. Um, you actually take it home with you then? You have to take it home. And uh, there's a little, uh, there's a little. Uh, you can work with both Super 8 and also with 8 millimeter film. And uh, I don't think so. I think it just works with VHS. Oh, okay. Not right, so Super 8, you can't, I, you can't the, do this not VHS. The and also uh, we had people come in just so you know this. We had a woman come in and she had all her Disney tapes and she wanted yeah. to make them into um, a DVD. You can't do it. So okay. if you have a if you have a um, something that you bought that's on VHS, um, there's copyright information and actually oh, the, okay. they won't do it for you. So she didn't I'm want trying to get stuff converted 
from yeah your own. it's it's got to be your own your, stuff your, like it's yeah. got to be like uh, a video that you took of your vacation it can't be um it can't they won't do it it has like a embedded which i i really was surprised to know that that it yeah. does have that embedded in it so you can't do it so but yeah we do have that you can put your uh you can um uh, you could I think we have people waiting for it, but maybe not. So um, just uh, go on to it and put a hold on it. And if you need help with that, just call the library and we'll put a hold on it for you. Yeah. As long as I know you cannot convert film to no, DVD. That's you cannot. It. Yeah. All right. So honestly, that is the end. And it's almost sort of perfect time and it, it, I just wanted to give you guys just sort of an overview of the various resources and materials that are available at the library and because honestly I've only I've been in this area since 2018 and I started coming to the library I was unemployed at the time and my daughter was going to Downsville North and I would come and take classes that's how I learned about the PRC that's uh, People's Resource Center and then once I got a got hired um, started out volunteering and then ended up being a permanent employee. I got a car and I see all of the, the things that are offered here at the library. I'm so proud of Downers Grove Library. I, you know, withstanding everything, you know, there's hiccups and everything, but I feel like this, our library offers so much and we really want to make sure that we're providing a great service to the community. So I wanted people to be aware of what is available out there. And I hope that something that you saw today or heard will be something that you can use in the future or maybe you know someone else that might need it or even if it's just to check out books and manage your own account yourself with ease i i, I hope that this has been a helpful bit of information for everybody thank you for all the time yeah uh, any questions or anything no, no? and so um, i think uh, we'll send out an email after the class with the um, the training the material. material yes uh -huh. so that way yes. you can go back through thanks right. very much and thanks annie okay well good to see you bob <laughs>